since you're in my lovely abode, why not get comfortable a little while? Stay, stay with me. Get a nice hot cup of hot cocoa and enjoy the ride. While I explain a lovely book I've been enjoying. What Does Doodling Do? by Jack Andrade. First, a little background on the study. Before any real testing started, it was unknown if doodling aided, just maintained, or impaired our attention. The act of doodling may reduce boredom and therefore daydreaming, in which we may think of something else off topic from what we should be doing, like what we're going to eat for dinner tonight, or maybe our pets at home. Hit! This study takes a more cognitive approach to psychology and really focuses on the way we think about things, how we solve problems in the world around us, how we communicate with others, and how we retrieve and store our own memories. One strength of the cognitive approach is that it, is often very, it often uses very strict scientific methodology in which there is a manipulated independent variable and a very strictly measured dependent variable. Another strength of the cognitive approach is that it aims to focus on our mind, which is key to the human experience and how we live our lives. Another strength of the cognitive approach is that it aims to focus on phenomena that we use and see each and every day, like learning, memory, and thinking. However, it does have some weaknesses. One weakness of the cognitive approach is that it could be considered less scientific because it aims to focus on things that can't really be seen, like thinking, you can't really see the way we think. Another weakness is that it could be considered reductionist because it often compares our brain to very standardized things like computers and doesn't take into account physical or emotional variables. A final weakness of the cognitive approach is that it could be considered more nonauthentic because it states that us as humans, our cognitive processes are all the same. It doesn't really take into account people with disorders like schizophrenia. In the Andrade study, what does doodling do? Her aim was to investigate whether doodling aids in concentration during a boring task. And she hypothesized, in fact, it would aid in concentration. And the results would be shown in the surprise memory test for each condition, the doodling and the non-doodling, after the two and a half minute tapes. So, overall, the study was to test concentration and memory. The sample of this study were 40 members of the Applied Psychology Unit at the University of Plymouth, age 18 through 55. This mostly female group were all volunteers who obtained on the way home from a completely different study and given a small amount for their participation. In Andrade's laboratory experiment, she used independent measures which randomly assigned the 40 participants to a either 20 participant doodling group or a 20 participant control group in which they didn't doodle at all. They just listened to the tape. The control group ended up with two male participants and the doodling group ended up with three male participants for a total of five male participants compared to the 35 female. So the study started with all participants being recruited on their way home from a completely unrelated study for a five-minute test. And if they agreed, they were taken to a very dull and quiet room. And the control group was given a piece of lined paper and a pencil, while the doodling group was given a piece of paper with ten shapes and a margin on the left-hand side and a piece of and a pencil. And they were all they were all 
told to listen to a rather dull and quiet tape about a friend inviting you to a party. And then they were told to write down the people going to the party for certain and ignore the people who aren't going or other information like that. And the doodling group was also told to shade in the shapes, that being the circles and the squares on their piece of paper. And then after the tape was done, all of the papers were taken and they were given a surprise memory test. Half the participants were told to answer the names first and then the places in the, in the recorded tape, while the other half was told to answer the places and then the names. And then there was also a minute interval in there in which they were apologized to for not being told in the beginning that there was a surprise memory test. And then after the participants finished the surprise memory test, all of them, all of the papers were taken up and then the participants were fully debriefed and apologized to once again and then asked if they suspected a surprise memory test from when they were first recruited. There were several controls used during the study, like standardized instructions, counterbalancing to prevent any type of order effects, and the same telephone recorded message for both the doodling and non-doodling groups. When it came to apparatus, a two and a half minute telephone message was used, a pencil and a lined piece of paper was given to the control group, and a pencil and a piece of paper with ten shapes, circles and squares, for them to shade in for the doodling group. And on the left side of the piece of paper was an empty space for them to write the names during the tape. In the results of the study, the doodling group recalled a mean average of 7.8 out of 8 party goers correctly, while the non-doodling group or control group recalled only 7.1 out of 8 party goers correctly. And when it came to the names and places surprise memory test, the doodling group averaged around 7.5 answers correctly, which was around 29% more than the non-doodling group, which only answered 5.8 answers correctly. And any incorrect answers, or false alarms as they were called in Andrade's study, were subtracted from the correct answers of the participants. Overall, this study's hypothesis was proven correct, and it was found, in fact, that doodling does aid in our concentration. And this was proven in the names and the named and places surprise memory tests. However, Andrade's study never fully explained why doodling might aid in our concentration. Maybe it just keeps us from daydreaming and makes us focus on the task at hand. But Andrade never really said that. This study was for the most part ethical because it made sure to receive partial consent from each and every participant and made sure every participant know that their doodles would not be judged in any type of way. It also didn't hurt any of its participants at all. It made sure to debrief them after it was all over and apologize for not telling them about the surprise memory test or any stress they may have caused. However, this study did use deception in which the participants weren't told about the true aim of the study before it all started. So the participants weren't able to give their full and utter consent. Situational and psychological debate, Andrade's study could support both perspectives. It could be stated that some participants may use this technique often in their everyday lives to stay focused and help them stay on top of but it can also be stated that just the specific laboratory setting and how standardized it was, was the only reason for improvement of recall. Overall, the study did have multiple strengths, but at the same time, multiple weaknesses. One strength of the study was that it used counterbalancing to help prevent any type of order effects. And the counterbalancing used in this study was that one group had the, name, the names first and then the places and the surprise memory test, while the other group had the name, the places, and then the names. 
The next thing was that this study was a highly standardized laboratory experiment. So, Eric, so all the participants had to listen to the exact same two and a half minute monotone telephone recorded message. The next thing was that this study did use independent measures, which helped to prevent or which helped to prevent any type of extraneous variables. And so some participants were able to turn up the volume or turn down the volume on the recorded telephone message to their liking. The final strength is that this study did use deception in the beginning. So the participants weren't told the true aim of the study to help prevent, to help stop any type of suspiciousness or demand characteristics. One weakness of the study is that it may not generalize because all the participants were taken from the exact same place, the University of Plymouth. The next weakness is that there was absolutely no qualitative data, only quantitative data, which was the correct answers in the surprise memory test. They could have asked some self-report questions after the testing was done, but they decided not to. The next weakness is the participant variables in the study, and that is some participants may use dueling the dueling technique every single day in their lives to stay focused, while some participants might not use this at all but think that dueling is dumb and it impairs their concentration. The next weakness is the obvious ethical issues because they weren't able to receive full consent from all the participants, only partial consent because they did use deception in the beginning. And the final weakness was that the dueling task was restricted. So the participants weren't able to do whatever they wanted, that is, um, monsters or cartoon characters or even flowers. They had to circle in, they had to draw in circles or squares. So, there you have it. What is Doodling Do by Jackie and Drop? This study was marvelous, honestly, in my opinion. Like, who would think about that? Doodling! Am I right? We do it every single day, almost. And if we don't, we probably aren't even thinking about it. But, thank you for coming. Thank you for staying with me. And see you on the next study, next time you come here. Peace. <laughs>